Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to shoot a two person interview. Okay, so this video is gonna be broken into two parts. The first section, I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes of a two person interview that I just got done filming with my buddy, Justin. And then the second part of the video is gonna be a little bit more of a budget friendly setup that you can do for a two person interview if you don't have quite as much gear. Okay, so jumping right into it. The A camera for the shoot was my Canon C500 Mark II. Uh, I chose this as the A camera to be the kind of the wide shot of both people here. And the reason I chose that was because you can shoot sort of a wider field of view and still retain that shallow depth of field. That's something that you can't really do on a Super 35 sensor. And that was actually one of the main things that attracted me to the C500 Mark II was the fact that you can still get that separation. You'll notice the separation from the back wall there. There's sort of that shallow depth of field that's still retained on the wide shot. The B and the C camera were Canon C200s. The lenses we use on those cameras were the Canon 24 to 70, 2.8 version two. Uh, both cameras were matched identical, identical settings, identical cameras, identical lenses. That's really nice once you get to post-production. There's like literally no color matching at all. It's a matching everything. So you, you can just drop a LUT or a color correction on and it's gonna match for both those cameras. For the A camera, we shot that in 4K 10-bit 422 XFAVC. Uh, that was in C-Log 2, and that matched really well with the C200s. The C200s do have just a touch more saturation in, in RAW than the, the C500 Mark II does in XFAVC. So that's just something you can just add a little bit of saturation in post and they're gonna match right up. So for this shoot, my buddy Justin was the director and the producer, and I was basically acting as the DP, the gaffer, and the grip. I mean, it was a pretty minimal crew. So I still wanted to get a really cinematic look to it. The thing I usually like to do for interviews, be it a one person or two person, is I always like to put the cameras where it's shooting on the shadow side of the face. So I think that's a little bit more of a cinematic look. And I typically go for the Rembrandt look if I can, which basically all that means is that you're shooting the camera on one side and you're getting like a little triangle of light on the other side. The best way to do that that I found in a two person interview is if you can do what's called cross key lighting. So basically what you do is you'll have two lights on the opposite side and those will be lighting the individual subject and then you'll have one light in the middle that's sort of acting as a fill light uh, and making it so it's a little bit less contrasty. So in terms of lighting, we used an Aperture 300D Mark II boomed out on a Matthews Minimax arm. These things are really sweet. So they basically, it's almost like a C-stand on steroids. You can basically take your light and boom it way out over, probably five times further than a C-stand can. And so that's a really nice way if you need to get like how we use this Aperture Lantern here. If you want it to be in between both subjects, you really need it to be oh, on a, a really big boom arm or to be boomed in from the roof. We also used two Aperture 120Ds through 36 inch light domes. And those were doing what's called cross key lighting. So basically at the same time, it's gonna act as a key light for one subject and a hair light for the opposite subject. So I'll put a little diagram of how those lights were set up here. And this is really cool because you can achieve a really nice cinematic look with only three lights. So in terms of audio, I was actually running audio myself too. So needless to say, I had a busy couple of days, but we ended up, we were gonna use some shotguns as well as labs, cause that's my typical preferred setup to have both. So you have sort of an automatic backup. You can use the lab as the backup and use the shotgun as the primary. Cause I typically prefer the audio from the shotgun a little bit better, but it just sort of over, over complicated the setup. And there wasn't a perfect way to boom in the shotgun mics with the grip gear that I had on hand. So what I did is I ended up just using the labs and those actually worked out great. Um, it was used two matching Sennheiser AVX kits with the MKE two labs. You know, this, this kit doesn't have very good range to be honest with you, but for what we're using it for, where your subject is just about five to 10 feet away from you, it works perfect. So that it worked out well and I'm happy we went with that decision. So the next thing we'll talk about is monitoring. I was basically cam mopping all three of these cameras myself, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but to be honest, it's something I'm comfortable with because a lot of productions, you just gotta be really nimble and lean. And because of COVID-19, it was one of those things we had to do. We had to have like a really minimal crew. Usually I would have probably one person on each of those cameras, which is kind of more what I'd recommend. So we were just kind of working with what we had to do. And the way that I found that works best for this is 
if you can run all your monitors back to one place. So what I did is I actually ran an Atomos Sumo 19 monitor. This is my big production monitor. So this is great for Justin as the director to keep an eye on everything that's going on. And it's also great for me as the DP to be able to keep an eye on all three cameras at one time. So what I did is I ran the Sumo 19 with our wide shot and then I ran two smaller monitors on top of that. They were displaying both the B camera and the C camera. And what I did is I actually had it play with the on-screen displays on so I could see things like how much battery life was left, how much media was left, and really just keep an eye on that and manage all three at once. So one thing that becomes really important on a multi-camera shoot is that you stay organized with your media. So this was a two-day shoot and we were shooting through multiple cards each day because they're kind of long days. So what I did is I kind of used my go-to system, which basically you label for the A camera, A001, and then you move up from there as you move cards. So the next card would be A002, A003, and so on. And then for the B camera, it's B001, B002, B003, and then same thing for the C camera. So once we were ready to swap cards, I'd grab the red tape from the camera and place it over the bottom of the memory card. So that way I know that card's full and it's not gonna get formatted until it gets ingested. And once I would ingest the footage on my computer, I would then take the tape off and then I know that card's ready to get formatted the next time I use it. So one thing I did wanna talk about was a little bit more of a budget-friendly setup. We definitely brought a lot of gear with us and I know probably a lot of people don't necessarily have access to all this gear or own all this gear. So one way that you can shoot a two-person interview if you don't have all these lights and cameras, if you're only shooting with one camera, try to get a camera that can shoot in 4K. And if you're delivering in 1080, it's really nice because you can use a wide shot for 4K and then you can just punch in to a 1080 image within that, that same frame. And it's gonna give you effectively three different looks or angles. That's a nice way if you only have one camera. And then in terms of lighting, if you can, uh, here's a little image that Jess and I shot. We just basically opened up all the windows and this is just with window light. There's no extra lights here. So honestly, I think this image looks really solid. And if we had to use this, it's okay. Um, it's slightly less professional and you don't get to get as creative with the lighting with really making the light hit the face exactly how you want. But you can see here, this is just pure natural light on the B camera and also on the C camera. And this is, you know, it's a passable image for sure. So if you only have one light, a really good setup is gonna be if you can take a lantern and boom it in between your two subjects. So here's with only the Aperture 300D and the Aperture Lantern, and this is boomed in between me and Justin here. And this is, you know, I think this is actually a really great look too. It's a little bit more moody. You'll notice there's a little more contrast here. The shadow fall off on our chins. It's not quite as smooth. Uh, it's a little bit more contrasty than what I wanted to have for the particular look that we we're going for for the shoot that we did. That's why I ended up using those two extra lights to help fill in the shadows and make it a little bit softer and wrapping. But if we had to use this, I think it's really great too. So if you only have one light, keep that in mind. Just you're going to want to boom in the light between the two subjects. And if you have a big enough light or your frame's tight enough, if you can go far side key, that basically means where the shadows on the camera side, it typically looks a little bit more cinematic. So anyways, guys, that was kind of a little quick one for you. Just wanted to run you through this job that I did and kind of just give a few little pointers. When I was researching two person interviews on YouTube, I just, I didn't find a ton of content out there. So I figured maybe this would be helpful for some of you guys. Uh, if you like this kind of video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.